Thank you very much, and uh, hi everybody. I'm really happy to be here for a second time in Karlsruhe. Uh, and yeah, I'm here to talk about uh, how we built a business dashboard using a few different tools. Uh, some I wrote and I, I write and contribute to, some I don't. But the idea is really to show how with uh, really few code and few uh, software you can now, uh, at least in 2018, uh, build really amazing thing uh, without a lot of energy. Um, so I'm Romain Dorgueil. Uh, I'm founder of a, a company called Maker Squad, uh, which is a very recent company where we build software uh, really quick with entrepreneurs. Our goal is to release software on the market the fastest possible, uh, usually under one month, to allow them to learn from uh, real people buying things instead of just having a plan which will never come true because one year later when they release, uh, it's uh, the they realize it, it wasn't working as expected. So we, we were trying to educate and work with entrepreneurs to build, release, uh, operate software really quick. Uh, the content for today is, uh, so first I will present the product I'm using to, to show all this uh, demo. It's based on a, a real product we have. Uh, it's a product we built internally, so it's not a, a client product. Um, then I will show how we planned uh, the metrics we will measure, how we re uh, we had a reflection about uh, what we wanted to do. And then we will have three sections about technical implementation using first Bonobo uh, for the, the ETL side, uh, then Grafana to visualize things, to make things accessible to uh, everybody, and then how we uh, run it in the cloud uh, using uh, Airflow to monitor the, the the, the workloads we have. Um, a few disclaimers. Uh, I'm the creator and main developer of Bonobo, so of course, and of course, also for the other tools, all things I say here is not I recommend nothing. Uh, I'm not saying you should use that. I just want to show what we did, and if it's useful to you, feel free to use anything. Uh, it's here for that. So, uh, the product uh, we built this on is a simple thing, really simple thing, which is an API that uh, takes a size and a URL, opens a browser, take a capture, and just serve the image to the user. So people can directly use uh, image tags uh, with captures without having to prepare the captures before. If we don't have it yet, we will serve an in-progress image. If we have it, we just serve it. Uh, it's not a new service, it's something we, we bought the, at the beginning of the year uh, because the old owner wanted to close the service, uh, so it's about 10 years old. Um, yeah, so nine years after, uh, we changed everything. It was an old PHP site, hard to maintain, and we killed uh, every bit of code, and we relaunched it in last April. Uh, it's now mostly Python. There is a few things not in Python, but mostly it's Python. Uh, and what we did not expect about that is that we realized that the traffic on the ex existing service was uh, around a, a bit less than one million uh, image served per day, uh, which was really not, really not expected. And in fact, the first release was not this. It was a 5.0, I don't know what, uh, because we could not handle the traffic with the first version we released. But really quick, we uh, adapted things. So internally, uh, I won't detail everything, but internally we mostly have uh, this, yeah, uh, this API server which serves the image. Uh, users uh, query the API server, says, yeah, I want the PyCon DE website. It looks, if Redis says it exists, if it exists, it will either save it from local cache or download it from the object storage and return the image. If it doesn't exist, it will send a missed message to an event message queue. Uh, this message will be picked up by a service called Genitor, uh, written in AsyncIO, which will check if it's not an abuse, if it's not someone trying to do bad thing, if it's not spamming a domain, if it's not... <sighs> that there is a lot of checks here. If it 
decides it's legit, it will send a crawl message to another message queue. A spider will launch a, a Chrome browser somewhere, uh, load the page, maybe without some ads and some tracking pixels and things like this, make a capture, store the image to the object storage, and says to the event message queue, yeah, I created the image. And then the janitor will pick it again, pick it again and update both the database and both Redis. So next time the user will come uh, get the image, um, well, it just requ uh, query the Redis server and downloads it and saves it. And uh, as of today, we can save image on average uh, around 100 milliseconds per query. Sometimes it's better, sometimes it's worse, but uh, average is that. Uh, there is a lot of services behind also that uh, generates a lot of data. Um, Without get going into uh, many details, we have the, the web server, we have the database, we have also external services like Google Analytics, Stripe, Slack, etc. And all, all those services generate a lot of data. So the, the goal today is to pick uh, whatever we need uh, in those different data producers to quickly build something uh, that we can use to change how we manage the business uh, on day to day. Um, so before we start, we already had a Grafana instance at the, the beginning. We, uh, you could see it uh, in this slide before. But uh, before we start, there is only technical metrics here. We just uh, got the CPU memory, maybe uh, from RabbitMQ, we got some information about the number of messages passing through the queues. Uh, and that won't help on the business side. That will help uh, for incidents. Uh, that will help to investigate whenever something something bad happen. Uh, but there is a lot of data, and it's it's really useless to to know how to grow the service or or how to do something uh, on the market or business side. But that's that's already an infrastructure we have. Uh, really quick nowadays to to set it up with uh, containers and things like this. And one thing to note is that we only keep this data for 15 days. So, because we consider that after 15 days, if we did not need that, uh, we will, yeah, it's, it's not useful. On the business side, it's different. We want to keep data the longest possible. Maybe not every second because we don't care about the conversion rate at a, sec at a given second. But we want to, ke to keep the data for a long time because we want to compare, uh, uh, month on month or year on year. So it's, different kind of data scale or data um, um, uh, resolution, maybe. I don't know. So, um, some water. So what was our plan when we started this? Um, basically, it's summarized by this. It's we wanted to uh, be able to improve things. And we consider that we can't improve something we can't measure. So the goal was to decide what to measure so, so we could decide what to improve. Um, it's hard to choose metrics, in fact, uh, and I'm not even sure we choose the, the right one. We iterate on that. Um, there is met metrics that are just um, effect metrics. For example, even revenue, if I just focus on revenue, I can uh, change artificially the, the revenue by maybe buying ads or things like this. But as soon as I stop uh, changing the changing how things are done and I, I go back to the old way, the revenue will come back. So it, it's just an effect of other things. Um, we decided to focus on very few metrics. Uh, I think if you focus on everything, it's not a focus. And of course, there is not one answer to this question. There is not one answer to this question for all business, but there is for each business, there is different possible answers that are not necessarily, uh, there is not one truth about that. But one, uh, having only one thing uh, is probably uh, the most important part. And one point I want to say is, is sooner I said, yeah, we, we realized that there was one million uh, image served per day. Uh, that's an, a perfect example of, of what we call a vanity metric, which is a metric that is nice to tell to a media, to a blog post or anything, because you say, hey, there is quite a number. I don't know if it's a big or small number. I, but there is this number, but we can't focus on that for the business. If we 
increase the amount of uh, of pictures we serve every day. We just increase the charges, the the costs, sorry, uh, and nothing else. It doesn't change anything. So to plan this, uh, we decided to use a framework uh, because, as in software for for business metrics, uh, for KPIs, people uh, started to to build tools, tools that we can reuse, and maybe we will build some of our own later, but probably not, because uh, there is a lot of smart people working on that. Um, the, the one we, we choose to use is called Pirate Metrics. Uh, who have heard about that here? Okay, not so much. Um, so the, the, the goal is to say, okay, my business is, uh, well, usually software as a service business is uh, managing users, and users are <laughs> Um, follow a journey through your product, which goes from acquisition when you just uh, the user di discover your service, uh, activation where you convince the user that he should act and give you something uh, about him because he's interested about your service. So, for example, he gives you an email address, or he downloads your mobile mobile application, or he creates an account. So you you turn it from anonymous to someone you know about. Uh, there is this retention phase where you not only have an onboarded user, but is recurringly, uh, recurringly coming to your site because it's still interested and have a, a, some stickiness with your product. You have the revenue phase where at some point you want to get something from the user in exchange of the great service you're providing. Uh, it can be money, it can be something else in some different business. And there is this referral phase where he loves your product so much that he's uh, willing to risk his social existence to recommend your product to his friends. Uh, that's one way to say it. Of course, not the only one, but you can't ask people to recommend something or you, you can say my product will go viral. It doesn't exist. In fact, people recommend things because they, they, they think that by recommending they will look more cool or more smart or... So you, you, you can't uh, make, share, make people share something they don't uh, care about. There is this much more complicated version of the exact same thing. Uh, if you look, you will find the acquisition phase here. You will find the um, activation phase here, the retention phase around here. You will have the revenue phase here. You will have the referral phase here. It's just when... When your business grow and you need more fine metrics and more fine things, maybe you need to have a more detailed workflow about the users. This is coming from a book, by the way, uh, called Lean Analytics, hence the, the title. Uh, but we are small. Our plan A is about, uh, for now, acquisition to activation, how we, uh, and, if, uh, and a bit of retention. It's how are we getting this service really interesting to users and really uh, su sufficiently good to so that user may pay something or may give something at, at one point. And for that, we decided to measure two things, uh, which is the rate from acquisition to activation, uh, how many users that I, uh, I can convert from anonymous to they created an account, and uh, some metrics about the quality of service both because we want to display it as a proof of uh, we have the best service out there. That's the only thing we we found to to like differentiate from uh, com um, competing services, and also because we want to have actually the best service. So we use it to measure it internally and try to improve the the metrics we have, the technical metrics about the service. So that's for the plan. Um, now we implemented it. I should have an introduction slide about that, but we implemented it in three steps. We have this, uh, the first step where we will extract data from somewhere with Bonobo, uh, and store it in a database that we can use directly with the graphing software, uh, aka Grafana, uh, to, uh, I'm lost. Uh, I start again. We want to extract data and format it for the graphing software with Bonobo. Then we will use Grafana to visualize it, and then we will show uh, how to uh, how to run it in, in the cloud in a way that you can sleep at night and and not being paged every few minutes. So the idea is very simple. We will use um, of first one question: uh, Who did already hear about Bonobo before? Oh. 
Cool. Uh, so uh, the idea is very simple. We have different data sources. We've seen it before. Uh, we want to read them, aggregate them in some simple way, uh, dimensions to metrics, uh, and store it in a database, which is especially built just for that. This database is, um, I probably had 10 minutes to, to build this. Uh, it's very simple. We just store a list of metrics, and we will store two tables of uh, values, hourly values and daily values. That's not the best way to do it. Uh, if you want to do something with a lot of data and a lot of related data, with complex dimensions and things like this, you should look uh, in Google for star and snowflake schemas. If you don't know about that, that's pretty much the state of the art. But to start, it's very, uh, it's much sufficient to do it like this. And we will store one data point per metric per hour or one data point per metric per, per day. So it's, it's not a lot of data. It's really small, uh, small data and the, the, the indexes here will be sufficient for, for that. So to present Bonobo real quick, uh, so it's a library I started a few years ago, uh, a rewrite from a uh, Python 2.7 library uh, that I had before. Uh, Bonobo is only Python 3.5 and more. Uh, and the goal is to build data pipelines, streaming data pipelines to transform data from one point to another. So for an example, which is pur purely theoretical, uh, would be uh, I select something from a database. For each row, I will call qualify. Uh, for each result of qualify, I will call join, which will maybe yield more than one result per uh, input row. And then it will be sent to report that will send an email per row. The big difference with uh, other tools you may know is that uh, it's really uh, it's streaming data. It means that every row, as soon as it's ready, for example, this select could select 10,000 row or 100,000 row. Uh, as soon as one row is ready, it will yield it and start running qualify. And each nodes in the graph will run in parallel. So you don't have to worry about the blocking uh, aspect of select. Uh, as soon as the data is here, it will start to be qualified. Here it's a linear example because I, I want to try to, to explain it simply, but we'll see um, uh, uh, it, it supports any kind of graphs, and we'll see uh, an example in the in the data processor we'll write uh, just now. It's if you want to to try it, you can just pip install it, pip init some job.py, and you can just run the job. It will run on your laptop directly, and yeah, basically if you have a good network, in a few seconds it's done. Um, Two aspects I want to emphasize is that it uses standard Python constructs, it's callables and iterators. Uh, you can also use more evolved structures, but you can just use standard Python, so you don't, you're not tying to Bonobo. And yeah, and every node is uh, taking things first in, first out, so you keep the order. Let's write some jobs. Uh, I will run quite quickly uh, in this because there is a lot of content after. Um, if I'm going too fast, we can speak about it afterwards, no problem. So here I wrote a, a reader uh, that's uh, based on the Bonobo SQL Alchemy extension and the select uh, things we have here. Uh, we are defining we're connecting to something we call website.engine. We'll define th this later. The transformation are not tied to a specific uh, database connection. It's the executor that will know what to connect to. There is a simple query that, c that counts uh, the number of rows in a, in a given table. And we just format that as uh, a tuple of two elements, a dictionary of dimensions. Here is date and hour and a dictionary of metrics to value. So here it's objects.tableName or some name.count, and we uh, pass the number of rows found here. That's a simple one, but we'll use it to count users, profiles, and API keys to know how many uh, people there are at a given moment. So we will store the amount of each of those uh, per hour to, to see the evolution. So you, we can also compute after afterward the difference between maybe the number of users yesterday and today, etc. Uh, and Bonobo will take 
lists of, of things to, to build, uh, to build the graphs later. So here we just says, okay, we will use the items, uh, like the dict items built in a Python from the dictionary to, to, to generate some data. So here we have one row, two row, three row, and we'll pass that to the, to the, pass that to the reader, uh, we defined just before. That's the first one. Uh, then we use the something provided by Bonobo, which is set fields, which just says, I, I want two fields and I want to name them. Here I name them dims and metrics. We'll use that as what we call our normalizer, which is like a bottleneck we will use. We, you will see on the graph later. But that, that's a stupid one, but it will be really cheap to uh, change it to a more complex thing that will normalize really thing, validate that we have the good format, etc. But to start, it's really sufficient. And the last one, which is probably the not really compl complex, but the, the, the most complicated one here, is the, an insert of or update, which will uh, basically just take whatever gets in input and put it in a table uh, as its output. And I added something that can filter uh, things and ignore some rows. So we can use analytics writer, the two different analytics writer instances in this graph, both to write hourly metrics and to write daily metrics. Now we can compose the, the graph. We can create uh, so a bonobo.graph instance that gets the, the list we, uh, we define uh, sooner. Uh, we have this normalized thing. We have an add chain both for analytics writer that will, uh, filter on whatever row as an hour and put it in a hourly value table and both one that takes whatever not have no hour and put it in the daily value table. And because it's better, uh, better to understand like this. It, you can Bonobo inspect this file and see that uh, the graph is whatever goes out of the X items will go in object count reader, uh, which uh, output will go to set fields and output will go both to the daily analytics and hourly analysis writer. Last thing, uh, we need to configure the actual service implementations that we used before. So here we use uh, two different SQL Alchemy engines, uh, one for the website engine that contains users, API keys, etc., and one for the what we call the events database, which contains both the simple schema we've seen before to, to write things and both some logs uh, about the service. We can already run it. We see the live statistics while it runs. Here there is only three rows, so it's really, really simple. But now that we built the skeleton here, we will add a lot of different, uh, inputs, uh, before the set fields, uh, thing. So, uh, I'll run quite quick into the code to, to keep some time for the, the, the next things. But for example, we, we, uh, we wrote, um, an Google Analytics reader that works in the, like the same that, uh, as a database, except that it use, um, it, it uses the Google Analytics API. So, uh, here there is, yeah, here there is the query uh, using the, the, the API. You've seen that the, 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 the client is passed as parameter, and we use this to say, okay, it's a service that once again will inject at runtime. Uh, we'll pass it as a concrete implementation later. Easier to make tests, for example. Uh, and then we iterate, and for each report, for each row, we yield two items, tuple with dimensioned metrics. Google Analytics is already uh, some BI software, so it's really easy because the data is already structured as dimensions to metrics. Uh, we wrote a Prometheus uh, reader. Prometheus, for those who don't know, is a TSDB, a timestamp-oriented database, uh, mostly used for monitoring uh, activities. It's, uh, uh, amongst other, it's what is getting the CPU values and memory values and amount of, uh, of messages in RabbitMQ. And we use it because it, it contains a lot of things, and there is uh, there is an, an, an API, an HTTP API that we can read from, and the query language. So here we will send a lot of queries to get some metrics uh, and keep the data points hour per hour outside of Prometheus. We also have some spider status uh, API that stores the status of our different browser every, um, I don't know every how many, but every maybe 30 seconds or minutes. So we select that. 
The big difference here is that we will have one row per spider. So, for example, if we have 200 spiders, uh, this will yield 200 rows. And then we will have some kind of reducer, a bit similar, like uh, similar to functools.reduce in Python, that will aggregate those 200 uh, rows into uh, uh, counts. We want to know the, the total number of spiders at a given moment. We want to know the number of active spiders uh, actually getting a page and the number of idle spider spiders. Um, so yes, here we we, we prepare the, the, the chain that we will give to Bonobo. Uh, we have the reader, we have the reducer, well, we have the reducer in a reduce uh, function, and we have a lambda here that will just format the two tuple, uh, the two element tuple with dictionaries, date hour, and metrics, uh, to have the same format as before, etc. And now if we, we inspect again, uh, we see that all the different, uh, chains we, uh, we created are here all going to set fields or normalize function and all still going to be written in the database using the same uh, writers. If we run it, it's great. We have a lot of statistics. Uh, we have a linear display, but it's non-linear. So for example, here we see that that output comes here, but uh, for example, this one doesn't come here. It's co it comes probably here uh, along with uh, a lot of others. So you can see the status real time. Uh, there is a few problem with running everything at, at one time, but we'll see after with Airflow. So, uh, I'm a bit biased, I told you about that, but uh, I really like to be able to quickly prototype things and be able to substitute some crappy uh, transformation I wrote at some point by some better one whenever I get the time or the, the, the energy, the, uh, whenever I'm willing to, to, to do something better. And, and yeah, it, it just runs on my laptop. I don't have any fancy dependencies or any uh, services to instantiate. It's just one process. Okay. So, um, it's great to have a database, but it's not really usable. So, who knows about Grafana? Yeah, okay. Um, for all those who don't know, uh, Grafana is a simple I, I wouldn't say analytics and monitoring. It's like, it, it, they present it like this, but it's, it's a graphing solution that can read pretty much anything and present it in a human uh, friendly way. Uh, I've shown it before, but the editor is a, a like a query editor uh, within the browser directly. So you can uh, change and try to build your graph directly in the browser. And here it's an example where we built uh, a graph that just gets uh, the amount of events of type created, crawl, or banned, it's events that can happen in the system, and just, just show it uh, as bar graphs. Um, I won't show all the queries because it's not really interesting and it's, it, 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 it will take time to, to, to understand them, but I, I can share if you, you need some. It's not really complicated, it's a very simple SQL. Uh, so here it's the graph once we exited the, the editor. Uh, we know here the number of uh, images created per uh, period of time. I don't know, maybe it's hours, I, I don't know. Um, we can display the spider, the output of what uh, the spider reader that was reduced, etc. We can, uh, in yellow, we see the active spiders. The, in blue, we see the total amount of spiders. It was at the, at the period where we tested a lot of things, so there was a lot of idle spiders, but uh, yeah. We have much more interesting, the spider timings, uh, how many time uh, to process a website in uh, average, uh, and both how many times since the message was accepted by the spider, and also how many times from the user uh, order to the image creation. Um, so we use that for two things. We use that internally, and once again, we have alerts set up uh, whenever some metrics goes over some threshold. And we also have public dashboards, so we provide our users live statistics or 30 minutes lagging live statistics because we need to cache that, not to hammer databases. 
but we, we provide live statistics to users as a proof of, yeah, we, we may be not perfect, but we're transparent about what we're doing. So you, you can know the, the, the real numbers. Uh, and so I, I started reverse, uh, based on the plan I exposed before, but, uh, we also uh, can compute the acquisition rates because when you have user counts and you have new sessions from analytics, uh, you can, like in SQL, you can directly make computations. And the simple computation we made is that we computed the amount of new users per day, uh, the amount of new uh, visits per day, and uh, the <coughs> transformation rate in orange uh, which is just a, a ratio between between two. So uh, we have a lot more to do. We did a few more since uh, since all the capture, which were this uh, this summer. Uh, but yeah, there is one problem with all this is that you you run it. We run it in Kubernetes, but that's an implementation detail. You run it, and then you want to sleep at night. You want to focus on other projects, and things goes wrong. Uh, the, the first implementation we did, it was a cron job running every 30 minutes, but maybe at some point you will lock your database for any reason, and so the, the, the task will start to stack up and, and everything not working anymore. It's whenever something fails, it's really hard to introspect because if it failed like two hours ago, you don't necessarily have the, the log anymore. Uh, it's thought maybe there is some task you don't want to run every 30 minutes, etc. And it's not easy to run manually. So I had a proposal from my cat, but I, I suspect he was more interested in the head from the, the laptop than really monitoring the thing. Um, so I installed Airflow in the in the Kubernetes cluster. Um, who knows about Airflow? Okay. Um, so Airflow, according to the doc, is a platform to programmatically author, schedule, and monitor workflows. Um, two other ways to say it is that it's a make for the it's a GNU make for the for clusters, or it's a, and it's also a cron tab for clusters. It's a bit. Uh, under saying what it does, but it's a really powerful thing that can schedule basically anything that can run on a computer in a really flexible manner by managing dependencies and, and, and retries and, and things like this. And it's very flexible. It can run workloads using a lot of different strat strategies. At the time, it was only uh, providing celery or Dask, or local, but celery or Dask. And there was a uh, Kubernetes one in progress. Uh, I don't know what is the state today. So we decided to use the celery one. Um, I would pass quickly on this, but the workers uh, from Airflow are depending the executor strategy. And you have a web server that displays everything and a scheduler that just reads whatever you work from the web server in the metadata database, uh, reads that and just schedules things to the workers using the strategy. It looks like this uh, from the end user point of view. It's a, basically a list of tasks uh, that you can disable or enable. You can run it manually here. You can get the logs. You can get uh, the dependencies. You can have, you have a lot of information. And most importantly, you have the the last runs status really quickly accessible. So whenever something fails, you can really quickly uh, introspect what happens. If uh, the if one job goes crazy, it's really easy to disable it while you investigate. So it's really one tool to help us sleep at night. Uh, on the code side, it's also using uh, uh, directed acyclic graphs, DAGs. Um, but not for the same thing as Bonobo. Bonobo is streaming data. It's using Dask to define dependencies between uh, what they call operator, which is one thing that runs. Uh, so we don't define really uh, dependencies uh, for this uh, example. But you can, for example, say, uh, handle this data, then upload to S3, then when it's done, uh, run a bunch of uh, 10 tasks that will analyze this data and produce a report. When the 10 tasks are finished, then you can send uh, a mail reports. You, you can do really complex things in terms of dependencies like this. Uh, here we just define different bash operators to run the Bonobo jobs. Uh, we will pass um, 
So we, we'll use a, a, a simple loop to, to generate different DAGs for all that. It matches the different things you see here. And we generate a special one that we will run only once a day. It's scheduled daily uh, to clean up old objects from database because we don't need to clean up every 10 minutes or so, or every hour. Uh, it also allows to define uh, connections. So uh, we defined the two databases here. And what we did is, uh, maybe it's probably not the best way, but it works really well. Really well. We just uh, got those connections from uh, Airflow and pass it as events, uh, uh, sorry, as um, environment variables to the processes. So uh, Bonobo will auto configure his uh, databases from this thing. Uh, so it was less trivial than expected to install, uh, mostly because I had to learn a lot about, about uh, some internals of um, of Airflow, mostly for the connections. I had to read the source a lot. Uh, for the Docker and Kubernetes users, there is uh, the company called Astronomer that make a, uh, that made a really good. Uh, Helm distribution of Airflow. Uh, the community charts I found was not really, really great. So I would advise to, to look what they did. Uh, they open sourced a lot of things. So yeah. This slide is interesting. I didn't remember that. Um, so to summarize that, Bonobo, uh, helps you build assembly lines, may help you build assembly lines. Uh, but it doesn't really care about the wall system. We use the airflow to manage the wall system. And really, we don't uh, see any more the job contents. In fact, I guess, I'm not sure, but I think it all runs also in containers. So even the code is not in the, in, in the airflow image. Sorry. And Grafana lets you make the human accessible to humans. And it's really quick to write and iterate. There is a few uh, reference books uh, that I would uh, suggest if you want to learn more. Uh, I must put this one, which is our Bible, even if it's not directly rela uh, uh, related, uh, and it's available for free. Uh, so you should look look at this one. Linalytics uh, contains a lot of uh, rec recipes uh, to uh, to think about what kind of metrics you would want to to see. And both uh, running lean and scaling lean uh, also uh, talk about, well, I, I deleted a bit of content from the presentation, so there is less, but uh, a bit of content about how to iterate and how to experiment around, uh, around data and KPIs. Uh, I'm always very eager for feedback, so feel free to uh, grab me any time in the conference. Uh, also, I will probably, uh, no, not probably, I will be here this weekend uh, and will uh, sprint on Bonobo. If you want to join, you're welcome. If you want to join just to discover uh, Bonobo, you're welcome. If you want to write a crazy new parallelization strategy based on whatever, you're also welcome. Um, and yeah, otherwise, that's my contact information. Feel free to uh, send me an email or contact me on Twitter if you have questions or if you want me to share some content of this presentation and I think we have like six minutes and a half for questions. So yeah, thank you. Thanks. Are there any questions? Um. Thanks for the talk. I uh, want to pose you a question regarding the tools that you use and how they it differentiate. For example, I, I quite frequently used uh, Luigi. So, how what is your experience and how do you compare it in comparison to the uh, tools you have already presented here? Uh, so, I don't know very well Luigi. I had a few discussion about it. Um, as far as I understand, it's uh, very similar to Airflow in some ways. Uh, it allows also to define dependencies very easily with Python code. Uh, so that may be a good replacement for the Airflow parts. Uh, also, as far as I know, Luigi can't uh, stream data from one, I don't know the name for them, but from one node 
to another. It's also dependency management more than data flow. Um, I choose Airflow because mostly because it joined the Apache Foundation uh, and Apache Incubation Project. So I guess it's a quality metric that was important to me, but probably Luigi, uh, and also Luigi is made by Spotify and Spotify announced that they started to use Airflow for some projects. So I thought it was kind of a hint that I should maybe go to Airflow more than Luigi, but probably both tools can achieve basically the same thing. And they can definitely achieve the simple, simple thing we did here. Thanks. Any other questions? Okay, then. Thanks for the talk.